Hello and welcome to the future site of Tube Noble. This is going to be the greatest nuclear power plant in the world. Actually, let me be honest with you. I've only built two of these in my lifetime and one blow up. That's pretty good odds if you ask me. 50-50 chance of great success? I would consider myself professional at this point. Matter of fact, I'm going to tell Knuckle, don't worry, I'm professional. I don't know who the heck that guy was, but the good news is, is he left his suit behind. We might need that. To make a fission reactor with mechanism, you need fissile fuel to power it. So down here in the basement, I started making fissile fuel. I build up in this dynamic tank and I'll break down the process for you of how it works. It starts out with water. You take water from a sink, put it into an electrolytic separator, and we need oxygen from here. The hydrogen, I'm dumping the excess. The oxygen goes into a pressurized reaction chamber and I'm feeding it blocks of coal through the top oxygen and this also takes water which is coming from the same sink that turns it into sulfur dust taking the sulfur dust putting it into a chemical oxidizer that is turning it into whatever this is sulfur dioxide i think yes and this gets mixed with oxygen in a chemical infuser and it turns it into sulfur trioxide so we're doing the same thing here, another electrolytic separator, pulling the oxygen out, boom. Now, taking the sulfur trioxide, feeding it into a chemical infuser that mixes with water vapor and turns it into sulfuric acid. The water vapor is pretty simple. I have another sink pumping water into a rotary, rotary condensator. Now this thing, if you hit this toggle operation, it turns it to deconcentrating and it turns water into water vapor. So that's getting pumped into that chemical infuser. Now I'm taking the sulfuric acid and I'm pumping it over here to a chemical dissolution chamber. And in here, I'm feeding it fluorite, which I'm growing outside in the ocean. And that is turning this into hydrofluoric acid. The hydrofluoric acid gets mixed with this stuff right here, uranium oxide, a basic enriching chamber. I'm feeding this uranium ingots, which I'm also growing in the ocean out front. This enriches them, turns it into yellow cake uranium. That gets fed to this chemical oxidizer and it turns it into uranium oxide. So the uranium oxide and the hydrofluoric acid go into chemical infuser. Why is this show empty? I don't know, but it was working two minutes ago. I'm having problems with chunk loading in this pack. And sometimes these tubes are acting pretty funky too. All right, I got it working again. I had to replace this machine with a new chemical infuser, but this is mixing the uranium oxide and the hydrofluoric acid to produce uranium hexafluoride pumping that out of here and it goes into the bottom of these isotropic centrifuges which these are taking that and turning it into the fissile fuel i'm pumping the fissile fuel out and into a dynamic tank to save up for what we're about to do i know that's why we're going to change the topic up knuckle that was confusing let me show you what I'm working on while I'm waiting for this fissile fuel to build up before we start making the fission reactor. We need blackstone, like a ton of it. We need nine times blackstone to make the ATM star. So I put in 35 igneous extruders that are making cobblestone, lava and water on each side. They make cobblestone, boom, shooting them out into a drawer on both sides here. And then I'm pulling the cobblestone out with a brass funnel from Create in stacks of 64. You can barely see that because of the smoke. 
goes on to a depot. Underneath the depot, got a soul campfire and two encased fans from Create. And then here I'm pulling them off the depot with a brass funnel. And this one is marked to only pull Blackstone. So I got 14 of these on both sides, shooting the Blackstone into a crafter. I'm gonna tear it up all the way to eight times because you can only put eight recipes in here. And then we'll have nine times Blackstone. This thing's cranking out though, dude. I'm actually surprised at how fast it works because I thought this was gonna be a nightmare to deal with. But let me give you a little tip on the, I think a lot of people are confused with the Create mod and struggle with it. So this is pretty simple. You need a magma block, two in case fans, right? Boom, like that. Turn this fan facing the magma block, put a lever on the side, turn that on, and boom, she's blowing. You put your soul campfire right on top of there. And the cool thing with the create mod fan is it doesn't matter how fast you turn this, whether you're smelting with lava, smoking with a campfire, haunting with the soul campfire, or doing the other one. I forget what that's even called right now, but that's pretty sweet. I just learned that today. Let's build this fission reactor now. I think it's important to keep in chunk boundaries while you're doing this. So we're going to go five by five for the base. They're all fission reactor casings. You need these for the base. And we're going to put in fission reactor ports. I got my fuel down here in the basement. Shoot that up right into here. Boom. And then we need a port for nuclear waste we're going to put that one over there we need a port for coolant input and we're going to need one for coolant output as well so let me build up for how high we're going to go here put another port there Then you just got to fill this in. The corners of it need to be reactor casing. The rest can be reactor glass. All right, now what we want to do is we want to take the configurator and we want to tell it this is going to be our input for fuel. So that's already set. This is going to be our output for waste. Shift, right click on there. Boom, in the bottom left, you see it says output waste. This is going to be our input for coolant. So that's already set. And this top one, we're going to make it output coolant. Boom, bottom left. Now we need to take fission fuel assemblies and they need to be capped with a control rod assembly. So the important part of these is you don't want them touching themselves. We're going to go five high with these. Then cap them with the control rod assembly. You can fill this in with glass. Have a reactor. Now, if I click on here, it's not going to do anything, right? Because we don't have fuel in there and we don't have coolant. So let's start with the coolant. We're going to use a sink to fill this thing up. Put the sink down. We need mechanical pipes. Just to fill it quick, I'm going to go extract from three sides on this. Bench, there it is. That'll fill that up pretty quick. Now we need to run our fuel line up here. Boom, that's now connected. So we are filled, we got fissile fuel, and we have coolant for water. So if I turn this on now, it would actually activate, but we're not set up for any of that yet. Because we need to deal with the nuclear waste. We're gonna deal with it like this. I'm pulling out the nuclear waste out of the reactor, splitting it into two different lines. One is going to these solar neutron activators. This is gonna turn it into polonium. And the other side is isotopic centrifuges. This is going to turn it into plutonium. The plutonium is getting pulled out 
set into this pressurized reaction chamber. This is mixing with water and fluorite dust. It's going to turn it into plutonium pellets that we need later on in this process to make the SPS casings. The polonium is doing the same thing, getting pulled out into this pressurized reaction chamber. Gets mixed with fluorite dust and turns into polonium pellets. We need this to make the SPS casing and also some parts and pieces for the ATM star. Now I have this overflow here, feeds into radioactive waste barrels in case these six machines can't keep up with whatever this produces. I have no clue what's gonna come out of here until we fire it up. This, on both of these polonium and plutonium, you also get a byproduct of spent nuclear waste. So I'm pulling it out the front here and it's gonna get sent into radioactive waste barrels on both sides of these. If we need to add more of these, I left room so we could do that on both sides. All right, now we're building a steam turbine. We're gonna go five wide by nine high. All turbine casing for the base. Then I'm going to go in the center here. I got these. This is a turbine rotor. One, two, three, four high. And I need these turbine blades. Put an eight of them on here. Go to the bottom. Hold down right click. Fills the whole deal up for you. Now we're going to bring up the turbine casings up the corners. We're going to add in two valves. One's going to be our power output on this side. Then we're going to take our steam from here. That's going to power the turbine. That's going to be the input for the steam. In a rotational complex, that's going to go right on top of the shaft. Surround it with pressure dispersing blocks. Need some vents. Six vents on here like so and then we're going to fill the rest of this in with casing on this layer got two electromagnetic coils one on top of that rotational complex one right next to it and then we're taking saturating condensers and we're going to fill this in right here turbine vent turbine vent turbine vent, turbine vent turbine vent turbine vent turbine vent turbine vent rest of this is casing. I'm going to take nine saturating condensers, fill in this top layer right here. I have left 18. Like this. Casing, casing. Casing, casing. Now, if we take reactor glass, we can fill all this in. One, two, three, four, five, eight. We need a ninth layer. We're gonna take these three out of here, vents. We're gonna put turbine casing there. Take it nine more vents. Put it at the very top in the middle. And then we're going to block this whole deal in with casing. We should then have, oh, finally. All right. So this thing is not the best turbine, but we don't need the latest greatest. We just need enough power to put in a battery that I have to build before we turn any of this on. I got to hook the steam up to this deal, get a battery built. Except they don't call this a battery. This is an induction matrix. Take induction casings, fill the bottom in, and then we need these induction cells. I'm going to put one there, one there, and an induction provider. One there, one there, one there, one there, one there, one there. We're going to put an induction port right here. That's going to be our input. And then I'm going to put an output over here for power. I think you need to configure these. I'm not sure. Output. There you go. 
take some reactor glass so we can see these things because they're expensive. Fill the rest in with casing. Boom, we got an induction matrix. This thing will hold 1.6 TEU, whatever that means. I'll hook up power from the turbine output to the input of the induction matrix. And we need to bring the steam out of our fission reactor port over to the input of the turbine. Then what we also have to do is we need some mechanical pipes. We're going to hook up mechanical pipe right to a turbine vent here. Bring it over to the input on the fission reactor. That's the wrong one. The last thing I'm going to do is upgrade these to the max tier. That way we don't have any flow issues with the pipe. And I think we're good to go. I'm going to do one last check over before we fire this thing up. And we're going to put that suit on too. All right. I unhook pipe from sink. Now we have one return line from turbine. Going to bring water back to reactor. I don't know what happens when I put this suit on, but I certainly talk kind of weird. Let's fire this thing up. Come over to the reactor, right click. Over here you got stats button, hit button. Now look at this. This is max burn rate, 25 millibucket per tick. It's right now set at 0 0.1 millibucket per tick. We're gonna crank this puppy up. I think 19.2 is the limit if I remember correctly, but we're not gonna go there just yet. Let's start with two. Hit check. Boom, it's now going to burn 2 millibucket per tick. Exit out of that, hit activate. It's doing things. It's heating. Temperature stays good. Turbine is spinning, we're getting steam. Turning turbine. This thing is making energy. And now we just have to play with the rate of how we are producing the energy and how much fuel we're burning. And this is something you have to figure out where you want your thing to be set. I'm going to play with this. Hold on, hold on. Whew, take that off. But I think folks, that's going to be the end of this video. It's a long one for sure, but I wanted to put one together showing you how this whole process is done. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Have fun. And peace! Let's try 19.2. Activate. Look at temperature. Temperature is good. This is good. These are working. Turning nuclear waste into what we need. These are working. Very good, very good. And we're getting some nuclear waste in the barrel. Not too good. We might need more barrel. Spence going in here. Very good. We're making energy, folks. Jeej.